that they are not in possession of any body camera footage uh, from your accident. You got to be kidding me. A moment of utter disbelief for Marina Caros. For 18 months, this desperate mom has been fighting with the city of Dayton simply because she wanted to see the body camera video from the cops who investigated a horrible car crash on Waco Street nearly two years ago that left her 16-year-old daughter a paraplegic, likely destined to life in a wheelchair, struggling to learn to someday try to walk again. It was the Dayton Police Department's job to investigate who should be held accountable for what happened to Maddie Carose. She was a passenger in the backseat of a car that flew over a ditch at speeds clocked in a police report at 96 miles an hour. My daughter is paralyzed because of this wreck and I need some answers. What has emerged after a Dolcefino consulting investigation is a horrible case of police negligence. Officers on scene failing to even inventory the vehicle, never bothering to do an accident reconstruction, even though Dayton police had two of those reconstructionists on their payroll. They did not even take photos of the vehicle or of the scene according to Sergeant Siebert. No sobriety test for the driver, no blood test despite the deadly speeds. When I say they have not done a, conducted a thorough investigation, I know for a fact because they haven't even interviewed my daughter. How insulting. Police couldn't bother to drive five minutes down the road to Maddie's house in 23 months? They deliberately turned their back on my daughter. 16-year-old Maddie Carroz was a dancer on the Dayton High School dance team. <laughs> But that all changed when she got in that car with her friends to go eat crawfish one day after school. The last thing Maddie remembers is telling driver Morgan White to slow down. The car lost control, flying 10 feet in the air and then crashing down. So I broke my nose, I busted my lip, I fractured two on this, three on this side, two on this side. Um, my left humerus bone um, on my hip, I had the skin over the fat and the muscle rip apart and the skin, I have scars right there. And then I had three small scars on my stomach where they did my internal surgeries. And then I had a fractured foot. The driver has never been charged with even breaking a traffic law. She was like, at least you still have your smile. And I was like, at least you still have your legs. And now Maddie and her mom are learning Dayton police destroyed the body camera videos that would have documented what else they didn't do. What else was said that day? Something that might help explain why police turn their backs on this family. Police have been playing a cat and mouse game with Marina ever since. And now we know they lied to her. She wanted to see the body camera video of the accident. Dayton police kept stolen. She asked for the records formally under state law. Dayton tried to keep the body camera a secret, telling the attorney general the tapes were part of an ongoing investigation. That's why the AG ruled in June Dayton could keep the videos a secret. But Attorney General Paxton, you were fooled. We now know there was no ongoing investigation. We demanded under state law Dayton give us those videos. Guess what? The city for the first time admitted they didn't have them. They were destroyed three months after the accident, nearly two years ago, months before Maddie's mom made that formal request. They could have told her then, but they didn't. Was there more damage caused to my daughter's injuries because of Dayton PD's um, actions and this is why they're destroying evidence? Or is it because, well, one of obviously something they're trying to hide? Dayton says those videos were routinely destroyed because they weren't part of an investigation. But wait a minute, their own accident report says pending investigation. Someone ain't telling the truth. The Carose family should be focusing on healing, not trying to solve the investigation themselves. Marina had to quit her job at the Harris County Sheriff's Department to care for her daughter full time, racking up medical bills, helping Maddie through hours and hours of painful physical therapy. Today's my daughter, Madeline Quiroz's last day of physical therapy, intense physical and occupational therapy. She's pushed it for three months straight six hours a day. And yet, the people that were supposed to be working the case, finding out the truth, have failed her. What's more frightening is we've now documented a track record of incompetence at Dayton PD, and what sure looks like a cover-up. Just months after Maddie's accident, the very same police department would fail to properly investigate an accident involving another young Hispanic woman, but she wouldn't live to talk about it. She is a beautiful girl. She can sing like an angel. She had a beautiful voice.
Ding. <laughs> Amanda Morales didn't know this would be one of the last times she would hear her daughter Alyssa Salazar sing. Alyssa had met up with an acquaintance, Bernice Montano, to go drinking at bombshells. My daughter was going to leave with the, with the boyfriend around 1.30 in the morning, and Bernice ran outside and begged my daughter to stay. My daughter stayed, and that was her mistake, because she never made it home again. It's the last video Alyssa would ever take. And look closely. Bernice is clearly enjoying her drink. The ladies leave the bar with Bernice driving. And what happened next? A horrible nightmare. So when she had the accident, the car flipped over three times. And on the last flip, my daughter was ejected through the sunroof. And the car landed on top of her and crushed her to death. Police noted in the crash report there was no suspected alcohol or drug use. But look at this. Photos taken by Amanda the following morning from the crash scene. Bottles of alcohol, Malibu rum, fireball, and a bag of weed. Right on top of Bernice's tattoo parlor business card. We for sure there's not a kid laying somewhere? We checked all around. Yeah. And uh, she's, that's the driver over there. She said, yeah, it was just them two. Are you hurt? I'm not hurt at all. Bernice never mentions to the cops about the drinking at bombshells. We do know that police sent the driver away in an ambulance to the hospital where they could have checked her blood alcohol levels. Okay. I got your phone. Is this your You're phone? Going. Okay. Is this your wallet? Okay, this is all yours? Okay. But when she got there, she just walked away instead and no one stopped her. Amanda's mom also complained that while police took her deceased daughter's phone from the scene, they didn't take the driver's. I asked the police to get her phone records because to me she was texting and driving. But they never did. They said they would, but they never did. According to Amanda Morales, police never bothered to call a single witness who saw the drinking at the bar before the wreck. Just like in the Carroz case, Amanda was denied an accident reconstructionist. But at least this time, even the city of Dayton knows they screwed up. Then Dayton city manager Theo Melanco wrote a scathing report recommending Chief Robert Vine be demoted, lose his other job as deputy city manager. Vine had even failed to reprimand other officers for their failures that night. Melanco left his job as Dayton city manager to go to Dickinson. But that report, it never saw the light of day. Day. Just four days after being appointed interim city manager, David Willard reversed the recommendation. No pay reduction, no demotion. And then the city actually refused to let even this dead girl's mother see it. Police Chief Vine resigned this week in advance of our news conference detailing the police department malfeasance we've uncovered. But his next bosses should still read the report that we now have. We think Willard and the police who made the scene of these accidents should face an independent investigation. And Mr. Willard, you should step down too. And like Marina Carose, Amanda Morales also pleaded to see the body camera video, even though it would be hard to watch, especially to find out if officers saw the alcohol and drugs that she saw the next morning and just didn't care. She was made to beg for it, to file a formal legal request. Again, the city got the attorney general to say they didn't have to give it up because Morales didn't use the right words when asking for it. Like this grieving mom was supposed to do something more than simply say, my daughter just died. Show me the body camera video of what you saw when you got to the scene. Dayton police wouldn't dare try that nonsense with us. We got the video. And you know what? The police, they saw those liquor bottles. After we provided the video to Amanda Morales, she texted us this. My daughter deserves better than their incompetence and disregard to life. I am very devastated. Wonder if the Texas Police Chiefs Association would have still given that award to Dayton PD months ago if they knew about Maddie and Alyssa. You look at that article, and they, they cannot be, that's not a reflective to what they, how they treated us, and, and that, they, that they're being recognized for all these, you know, uh, policy and procedure, you know, all that they're, they've got all their I's dotted and their T's crossed. Despite their heartaches, both moms keep fighting for the truth 
for justice for their daughters. And Maddie, she has her own daily struggle, a fight to one day walk again on her own. And I'm feeling a little bit more right here, here, my knees, here. It's not like as the same as it is here, but it's like feeling that I don't know how to explain. 